Bakersfield's Ward 1 City Council seat has been held for seven years by Willie Rivera, but he's now resigning in order to take a new position at Era Energy. Ward 1 encompasses much of Southeast Bakersfield, and KernVote.com says 20,000 people are registered to vote there. Two candidates are vying for the seat, including Eric Arias, who was born in Bakersfield and works as a field representative for Assemblyman Rudy Salas' office. Then there's Gilberto De La Torre, who, according to his website, has lived in Ward 1 for 25 years and works at a rent-a-center. We did reach out to De La Torre, but he did not choose to speak with us on camera for this video. We did, however, get a hold of the other candidate, Eric Arias, and we spoke with him about a few things, including asking him to sum up his platform in one sentence. I'm running for Bakersfield City Council because the status quo has not been working for families and the pandemic has only revealed that we need to do more on the issues of unemployment and jobs in addition to the housing crisis and public safety to ensure that we have a thriving community. What qualifies you for the first ward? I have a heart for this community. Ever since I started working in Supervisor Leticia Perez's office back in 2014, I've kind of stuck around. And I've come back to this community because I see the need um, and I, you know, always wanted to do as much as I possibly can to serve this community. And so uh, beginning, you know, back in Supervisor Prez's office, answering the phone calls and, and, and helping folks get, you know, fixes to their potholes, helping them get speed bumps, put in speed radars when folks are um, avoiding those main streets so that they could take uh, side streets and speeding down those. Um, those things were uh, some of the very initial things that I started working on in Supervisor Prez's office. And as I, you know, started to gain more experience, started handling bigger issues, cleaning up parks, cleaning up our local streets, um, addressing illegal dumping issues, as you know, is a major issue here in our ward. I've already been doing this work um, and I've been in those fights and I've been in those community meetings and discussions um, where we are doing everything we possibly can to make a difference and deliver for the community. Will your term be an extension of Willie Rivera's or will you take a new direction? The city uh, is, is frankly um, flush with cash because of Measure N um, that are specifically dedicated to uh, public safety and vital services. And I think that's a, a stark difference um, compared to a majority of Councilman Willie Rivera's seat um, or tenure, I should say, uh, because they did not have that flow of cash. And so now we're in a unique position as a council. Um, and, 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 you know, if, if, if honored with that opportunity to serve in Ward 1, I think we would have a unique opportunity to really make a difference, especially with those resources, the increase in staffing and personnel, uh, specifically on the public safety front, will allow for us to really make a difference and improve the quality of life for not just Ward 1 residents, but for the city of Bakersfield. What would you like to see in the future regarding the community's response to the pandemic? I think in the future, when we have exigent, you know, emergencies and crises before us, that we would expect our local government to respond quicker. Um, that said, I think we're at a, a position where we really have a lot of um, great grant opportunities, loan opportunities, to keep afloat some of our agencies, including small businesses, um, nonprofits, um, and then also um, something that's new, and I'm sure you're aware of, is the $10 million that the county and the city have allocated for rent relief and mortgage relief. Um, and so I would, would have loved to have seen a lot of these uh, different programs have been implemented several months before, um, but I think that we're finally at a place where we've really got a, a decent hold um, and a um, decent amount of opportunities to help people stay afloat um, and, and protect themselves in addition to uh, the COVID testing, which I think is at a number um, that, is, that is meeting the need. Um, but we certainly need to be doing more in terms of outreach, especially to our, our hard to reach communities, our C community, um, our, our, our Spanish speaking community, and that sort of thing. What is the biggest challenge facing Ward 1? I think the biggest challenge is frankly, homelessness. Um, and, and the reason why I'm not naming homelessness as one of my top three priorities is because, you know, I think that the housing issue and the jobs and unemployment issue play go hand in hand with the homelessness issue. But I think those two issues are um, specifically things that the city and the county and local government are often keyed into that we just need to continue to do better um, and, and dramatically improve and those two things will subsequently 
help out with the homelessness issue. Where do you stand on the future of the oil and gas industry in California? We need to continue to provide the cleanest oil and gas the world has ever seen. Um, and, and even if that means that we don't have combustion engines here in California, they still will probably exist in, in many other parts of the world. And I think that we are doing the world a service and ourselves a service economically uh, to continue to provide that clean oil and gas. How do you feel the community should move forward in light of recent police protests? With the Measure N funds and those public safety funds, I think we have a unique opportunity to really invest in our communities in a way that will actually make us um, healthier and stronger um, and help us out in terms of policing um, and making our, our community stronger. And so it starts with building that trust once again between the community um, and, and our law enforcement agencies. And I think that work um, on accountability and transparency has, has, is, is taking part, or, or excuse me, is, is starting to begin. Um, we see that with the Kern County Sheriff's Office um, which I am so grateful for, and then also with the Bakersfield Police Department, which are, are looking into several different policies that they can change and implement um, to build that trust. What else should the community know about you before they cast their vote? I bring two things to the table, and I think that's, that begins with experience and knowing how to get the little things done, um, whether that be cleaning up your streets, cleaning up your parks, making sure that our our local railroad tracks are, are taken care of. As, as you know, we see uh, tons of homeless um, and transient populations out there and illegal dumping um, out there. And so it's knowing how to work through those jurisdictional issues, figuring out how we can get those resources to take care of our community. And so on day one, I'm gonna be ready to go in that regard. But secondly, I know what it's like to work two jobs, to pay the bills, to pay rent. I had to do that throughout college. And so looking at, at, at our community, that is the serious situation that so many of our families um, are having to deal with. Um, and so it's, it's knowing that and, and coming from that background, that gives me a sense of urgency. If you wanna vote in the Ward 1 race, you can vote by mail right now, or you can go to an election place on Tuesday, November 3rd. And if you want to keep up with all of 23ABC's election coverage, you can be sure to stay tuned on all of our social platforms and on turnto23.com as well. But for now, here in downtown Bakersfield, Austin Westfall, 23ABC, connecting you.